application. Ooh, all right, <laughs> next. Um, okay. All right, so this is the public forum debate structure and I'll be explaining the order of speeches. So firstly, there's on each team, there's a first and second speaker and the first speaker will give a constructive, which is four minutes. The second speaker will give a, uh, a four minute rebuttal. The first speaker will give a three minute summary. The second speaker will give the last speech, which is um, a two minute final focus. And we'll go more in depth in the next slides. All right, so um, this is like kind of more detailed versions of what you saw before previously. But for the first speaker constructive, that's four minutes. Debaters are given a topic or resolution in advance and asked to prepare um, to debate both sides of it. This includes pre-writing a four minute speech for each side called a case. Each topic lasts for about two months before being rotated out for a new one. Then you have a second speaker rebuttal, which is also four minutes. And it's basically attacking everything your opponent said. Refute each and every argument like a can't stress this enough, don't drop anything. Um, if you keep a, keen, a clean flow, which uh, we'll explain in the next slide, you should have a response to everything. Remember, you should be trying to convince the judge why your side is right, not arguing with your opponents. Uh, the first speaker summary speech is three minutes and it's briefly going over all the summarized points and lightly refuting and um, basically reviewing what is going what has been going on through the debate. It's one of the key times to review the mistakes that your opponents have been making. And then you have second speaker final focus, which is the last speech and it's voting issues. So why should the judge vote for you and your critical and key arguments as to why you have won the debate today? And then you have the first and second crossfire between um, the constructive and the summary speech and basically it's just a back and forth questioning like great for clarification and catching mistakes your opponents make and basically um everyone arguing and like asking each other questions with no guidelines it's like crossfire is one of my favorite um parts of public forum debate it's a lot better than what you see in other forms of debate which is like cross x which is asking one side specifically just questions but crossfire is great and then there's also a grand cross which is three minutes um this is the same as normal crossfire except it's like everyone basically arguing with each other and then let's move on to the next slide so these are the speaker um times and um, the order of speeches in public forum, and this is the order that everyone will speak. So you can see that the constructives are um, given first, and then it goes to rebuttal. It goes to crossfire, rebuttal, and then crossfire again in summary, and finally grand crossfire and final focus. Okay, um, yeah, let's have Sophia explain this one. Yeah, so here are some terminology for the actual public forum rounds. So the first one is prep time. This is something sort of specific to public forum, but essentially each team has three minutes of prep time in which you're allowed to prepare your speech or prepare the arguments that you're going to say during the speech. And you can use this prep time or this three minutes, any time between speeches or crossfires in order to be more ready to speak for the next uh, speech or crossfire. And spreading is a form of talking where you talk really, really, where you talk not really fast, but you talk faster than normal in order to try and get in more points. And your goal is to just try and talk faster and faster. This is also apparent in Lincoln Douglas, and usually uh, you use it in order to get in more arguments, but make sure you're still clear and the judge can understand you when you talk fast. The last term is something called flowing. It's essentially taking note throughout the debate. As Kara said in the rebuttal, your goal is to try and refute everything your opponent said. But if you want to refute what your opponent said, you have to first know what their arguments are. That's where flowing comes into point. You take notes of what your opponent is arguing, and then you write down what you want to say against these points. And that's why, where you use your flow. And then you write their rebuttals to your points. And by the end of the debate, you should have a long piece of paper with all the arguments that both teams had and the rebuttals and summary and final focus points if possible, and perhaps the impacts in order to keep the round clear. Yeah, and remember, keep a clean flow. All right. Um, 
it's not working okay here's some advanced strategies so one thing that you'll see common in policy debate is stop issues um just a friendly reminder you definitely do not need to remember this it's just like um some pretty useful strategies you can use so first is inherency like if this argument is so important why are we not already doing this um this also ties into uniqueness like obviously if the pro is starting a war and the con is starting a war then like that's non-unique then you have solvency so can you actually do this are we already doing this like have we done this that's a typo have we done this and if so has it worked then um third we have topicality so does the plan relate or fulfill the resolution basically is it on topic or not can you have significance so is it actually important and does it make a difference whether you do this or not? Um, let's move on to competition experience. So um, the Georgetown Fall 2021 um, competition was a competition that Karis and I participated in as partners. So during that time, the public forum topic was the North Atlantic Treaty Organization should substantially increase its defense commitment to the Baltic states. So it, like a general preview of this was pretty much like whether this um, organization should add more troops and defense to this um, place uh, called the Baltic States. And it was pretty much like Russia was threatening the Baltics and the pro was arguing that we should put more defense and the con was saying that we shouldn't. So basically this tournament went from Friday, October 8th to Sunday, October 10th. And there were six preliminary rounds, meaning that everyone attended these six rounds, but then um, as some people got into the five elimination rounds, people were eliminated and got out, and that was how the places were decided. And additionally, this was an online tournament. Um, yeah, so this is our first tournament that we ever attended. Obviously, you can see that we did really, really bad. Um, it's okay. Practice makes perfect. We're kind of better now. But yeah, a reminder, debate is one of those things where you like actually have to be in a round to understand and learn from it. So it's okay if you don't get it for now. We're just trying to teach you the fundamentals. So when you're actually in a debate round, this is like, like you, you know what to do. And then um, let's actually move on to what our cases look like. So your case is the first speech your team makes and basically what your arguments are. Um, every debater's case looks different. It depends on how you like to organize and format your cases. So your case doesn't have to be perfect. There isn't anything that defines an actual good case. As long as you feel that it works to your advantage, um, it's a good case. So let's, let's take a look at these. Um, right now, our resolution, our topic is based on cryptocurrency so i'll show you what like the like affirmation case looks like um can you guys see that are you, are you guys see? yeah okay um so isabella's first speaker which means she's going to be reading off of this doc the first thing like the first speech she makes is going to be this document and it's basically just reading everything that's bolded and underlined um, different cases look different for everyone, as stated previously. It's just like a matter of preference. Um, as second speaker, I would like to show you what my document looks like. And basically what I'm doing is I'm writing everything that everyone on the other team is saying. And then I'm typing as fast as I can, sometimes using prep um, to respond to everything. So it's like very fast. You have to be like a quick thinker to be a second speaker, I believe. And I'm, I kind of don't want to show you guys because it's kind of bad, but um, basically what I do is I go like, wait, it's kind of embarrassing. Okay, hold on. It's like all caps and it's like really bad spelling and random question marks everywhere. Um, but um, wait, this is going to be so embarrassing. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's just, that's just what it looks like. Um, just wanted to show you guys what a case looks like. Again, debate is one of those things where you have to like actually be present um, to for it to really click. And then, yeah, um, let's move on to the next slide. Like expected arguments and then my responses to them. So it's kind of like, yeah. Yeah, so a lot of times opponents have similar points. So as you get um, into farther and farther into this tournament, you basically have responses to most things. 
your opponents will say, but sometimes they say a really like far-fetched thing or um, really weird topic. So most of the time, we just have to give a basic response. But as long as we don't drop it, um, the speech the speech just goes on. Yeah, and um, as stated before, we showed you guys like stock issues. That's one of the things like you can use like if someone says something that's really off topic you can just like run topicality on that like just because someone says something doesn't mean you have to prove that it's wrong you can just prove that it's insignificant or something um bella do you have a question are there gonna be more workshops or is this just an like a kind of introduction uh, so for public forum, yeah, there's a spring course. We'll be sending more about that in our newsletter once we have that finished. And as for workshops in general, this is our second to last workshop. There is one more that is in December on binary. It's not debate, it's more coding. Binary um, on December 5th. If you have any interest in that, uh, I won't be teaching that. I don't think Isabella or Karis will be teaching that either. I think the teacher will be someone different, but yeah, that's the last I think, workshop that we I think I signed up for all the workshops. Yeah, so you will receive an email most likely on the third or the fourth or the day of, in which we'll tell you, give you the Zoom information for that. <laughs> okay. Uh, are you guys good with the Google Classroom code or is there anyone who has to type it? All right. Wait, what was this? Oh, okay. Oh, uh, yeah. So I'm assuming you guys don't have any further questions, but if you do, go ahead and ask. Um, yeah, I think we should go through just like the actual slides again. I we because we did go through it pretty fast. Um, yeah. So speech times is something that is pretty confusing in public forum. Um, basically for one team, there's two speakers. There's a first speaker and a second speaker. So <clears throat> first speaker says the first speech, then you have the second speaker, then the first speaker again, then the second speaker. And you do this, but usually for like <clears throat> first speeches, so you have like the first speech, you're gonna take the first speaker for both sides. So first speaker for pro and first speaker for con are gonna be giving the speeches in order and then they're gonna have a crossfire with each other then you have rebuttal for second speaker on pro then second speaker on con and then they're gonna have a crossfire like against themselves and then you have summary with um <clears throat> first speaker like first speaker for pro and then first speaker for con and then you're gonna have a grand crossfire which is basically all first and second speakers for both pro and con are going to be like asking each other questions and um, the times are kind of confusing, like to remember four, four, three, two, like, yeah, you can just remember those. Or if you're like really having trouble, one thing that Isabella and I did a lot, was just look up what the speech times were because we didn't even know what the speech times were during like a debate. We were pretty inexperienced, but yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, she linked a video of like public forum structure in Google Classroom because it's one of the most, like, it's one of the more um, challenging things to learn, but then. Yeah, so definitely I would say getting started is one of the hardest things to do in public forum or even any other style of debate because you have to learn the structure, what type of speaking style to have in order to please the judge. And there's a lot of things that you have to learn. And so we mostly learned this by going into tournaments and reading the comments that the judges always gave. But even though we didn't always win, we slowly got um, better. Yeah. Um, so one of the most like challenging things again is like, just, yeah. So like the speeches themselves are actually kind of difficult. Like what are the jobs of each speeches? So this is like a basic fundamental thing that you kind of need implemented in your brain if you do debate, but, um, so the first speech that any team gives should be a case and that should be all of your arguments like just one by one and then you have your rebuttal which is basically attacking like arguments that the other person said then summary is kind of difficult to explain because i don't do summary but isabella can explain that 
So in the summary speech, um, it's very similar to the rebuttal speech, but there's some time to talk about the mistakes your opponents made and what arguments they've dropped so far because the speech right next at the speech right after this is um the speech right after this is the final focus and you really don't have any time to refute any more in final focus so summary is your chance to talk about the points that you haven't talked about so far to refute to refute the points that your opponents brought up the new things that your opponents brought up and um, so summary, you talk. You also talk about what your opponents have dropped. It's very similar to rebuttal, but there are some differences that we'll we'll go over in the spring workshop or the spring lessons. And then for each individual speech, there's actually a lot of techniques you can use. Um, so like for final focus, you have like weighing and like impact calc. But we're 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 gonna go over that in like future lessons. Basically, final focus is just critical arguments as to why you have won the debate and then more like times and then um terminologies i think these are actually pretty easy to remember it's just prep time like getting time to prepare then you have spreading which is talking fast and then flow sheeting so flow sheeting is kind of difficult to also start um but sorry so many notifications but just basically write down every single argument that someone says and it's really hard to keep a clean flow especially for someone like me like I I don't flow well so one of the ways that I use it is like using sticky notes um and then every time you like write it down and then you respond to it just like crumple it up crumple it up for like dramatic effect um and then yeah we went over stock issues but you don't need to remember that you can also go over that later and then um yeah, yeah, that's that should be it. Are there any more questions? 